good to see you. We were talking a couple of weeks ago and uh, we were anticipating this one. So what did you make of the event last night? Look, it turned out well, especially mostly, you know, the clouds. That's always kind of the hardest bit sometimes to manage. But uh, cleared up beautifully here in Canberra and Sydney. I think it even Melbourne, notorious for its bad weather, was able to pull off some clear patches. So it looks like there's been some great shots and views all across Australia, seeing that nice red color, you know, and as, as we've talked mm. about before, that red color that people saw did vary in some locations based on what our Earth's atmosphere is doing. So it was kind of a cool thing to see, um, but it would look like a great night enjoyed all across, including here in Canberra. Yeah, now, now just for those who are, who are a little bit unaware of, of the phenomena of what happened last night, Brad, can you explain what's going on? Yeah, so, you know, we have that super moon, as we were just hearing, and that's when the moon is a bit closer, uh, and therefore it could be a bit bigger and brighter in the sky. And it does have real effects, like causing more extreme tides. But now, that the big star of the show really was that blood moon, the total lunar eclipse. Now, this happens every couple of years, uh, and that's when the moon passes into the Earth's shadow. So those who were watching last night slowly saw the moon darken kind of from, like, 5 o'clock going across, looking almost like Pac-Man kind of eating the moon until a sufficient amount of the moon surface was covered in that shadow and it started to have that reddish hue that we saw. And that reddish hue is coming from Earth, uh, essentially Earth's atmosphere, a little bit of sunlight skins the Earth's atmosphere, goes off into space and lights it up. So we huh. were literally seeing sunrise and sunset being projected on the moon. So it was a really spectacular feat. Was, did it have anything to do with distance as well? Was, was it closer than it usually was? Yeah, so it was a little bit closer than it usually was. It was a, a little bit bigger and brighter in that sky. So that just kind of helped the overall, overall ambience. You know, that's the sort of thing is when you have a few of these different things going on, and more importantly, it was at a very convenient time. That's the really yeah. super helpful thing here is that, you know, on the East Coast, people could be at home by 9.45, having seen most of the action. And in Western Australia, essentially, you know, it was uh, 7 o'clock. It yeah, was prime uh, time. dinner time, prime time. That's yeah, right. yeah. How rare are these, Brad? When are we going to see this again? So we will get another total lunar eclipse on November 8th. Now, that is in the middle of the night, so you have to be a bit more dedicated to see that. Uh, the next total lunar eclipse blood moon won't even happen until 2023. And so this next super blood moon won't be for at least four years. So it's definitely something that uh, we'll have to wait a little bit. But if you did miss the blood moon, the total lunar eclipse, and you're willing to dedicate a little bit more time, you have a chance <laughs> in the late night of November 8th. OK, so what's the difference between the Again, my head is swimming with information at the moment, Brad. What, what does, what's the difference between what happened last night and then the total lunar eclipse, as you mentioned, there coming up in November? So, so that is the same thing. Sorry, yeah. yeah. So the the blood moon total lunar or t total lunar eclipse. The so same thing. Is happening so that's coming again. up again yeah. in November. That is that that's right. But then we have to wait a few years. So sometimes we get these six month periods where we get a total lunar eclipse happening, and then we have to wait quite a while. Right. And that's what happened actually in 2017 and 2018. There was a few in a row, but then we had to wait. Uh, until 2021 last night. So this is a, th this seems to be um, quite an exciting time for stargazers at the moment, Brad. There's plenty going on. Yeah, that's, a, that's always the great thing is when you get to talk about all the cool discoveries that are happening in science and then at the same time go out and tell people, you know, what we can see, what we can do and for people to enjoy. Uh, and, you know, especially something like a total lunar eclipse or this you know, mm. blood moon that we saw, you didn't need any special equipment, right? You know, some people had the, their cameras or telescopes for a closer view, but people were just popping outside and noticing, hey, the moon is disappearing and turning this red color. And it's very easy for a four-year-old, like my four-year-old, to go out and enjoy it with, and, yes. and understand and see something is drastically different. So how did this one compare to, to the previous events that you've seen, Brad? So this was what actually one of the really good ones. So it had a good length. So, you know, the... The length can really vary, and that just depends on the angles and how much of the shadow the moon goes into. Does it just skim it, or does it go straight through? Uh, the timing was really important here. The weather was another cooperation. Yeah. I think the last one we had in 2018 happened at about 4 a.m., uh, and it was cloudy, so it, it was just miserable all around. So, you know, this one was having some clear weather in the evening. You know, that combination sometimes can really uh, make or break it like we've seen in other things.